Good afternoon, everybody. I know normally I do a morning post, but, um, well, we uh, had a power outage, so um, it was easy to go in the afternoon. Also ties in a little bit of what I wanted to uh, talk about today and um, kind of give some, a little bit more. Um, I know right now Louisiana is working that five o'clock this afternoon, we're under the stay-at-home mandate from the governor. So we're looking at even more time home, uh, you know, now that we haven't had enough. So um, this time right now, you know, it's after lunch, it's already kind of a lazy time. A lot of people are probably, uh, you know, crashing from their food comas and stuff. Um, it's a good time to, that I wanted to talk about again, um, what do we do during these times? What do we do during these days? Especially again, we're facing a lot more time on our hands. Um, Parents are more and more facing, oh goodness, what do I do with my kids? You know, the big question. Um, so I kind of wanted to give us some some things that we can do during this time. And first of all, um, I am reading this very good book. It is called The Noontime Demon. Oh, I'm blocking my face. Um, it's a great book. It's on the vice of Asadia which is we call, commonly known as sloth, commonly known as laziness. Um, but this thing really kind of hits it in a, um, a very beautiful, I guess, I don't want to say it, like understanding of our, our world today, you know. And so there's some really good quotes in here. Um, one of them is, talking about this asadius laziness is um, basically what it says is the rejection of one's own greatness that when we're tempted to laziness we're tempted to um, to in being inactive and a lot of that times that comes because we don't feel we're good enough to um, and it feels you know it's an inability to to believe in the greatness of our vocation and to do anything really good um, it's against the virtue of what we call magnanimity Ma mag Magnan, magnanimity, magnanimity, which is greatness of spirit. Um, and so what we look at is magnanimity is the ability for us to do great things, to be great, to be awesome, which is what we're called to. But I think in these days, we're not really feeling that way. We don't feel up to that challenge. Um, so here's a quote that they take, and it's from Pope Benedict. He says, Today there is a remarkable hatred among people for their own real greatness. Man sees himself as the enemy of life, of the balance of creation, as the great disturber of the peace of nature, which would be better off if he did not exist. As a creature that went wrong, his salvation and the salvation of the world would on this view consist of his disappearing, of his life and soul being taken back from him, of what is specifically human, human vanishing. So that nature could return to its unconscious perfection in its own rhyme and with its own wisdom of dying and coming into being. And I think, again, we look at all this and we look at the politics and what's going on. And sometimes we say, goodness, like some people are like, we have really messed up this world, haven't we? No, we haven't. We have crowned this world. Um, we are the crowning of all creation. And we see that in Jesus' incarnation. When Jesus became flesh, he showed that you know, we are good. Um, and so being great, being, being active is part of being Christian. It's part of our greatness. So that's what we're called to during these days. So what I wanted to do again during these days is offer us again, things we can do, um, to fight off the boredom, to keep ourselves active, to continue to live out the greatness that is, that is us. Um, so I also wanted to particularly target parents. Um, parents who have kids, you know, what are some things I can do to sort of, um, you know, keep me and my kids busy during these days and everything. And, um, a couple of things. First of all, um, as you can see, I gave blood today and people were like, oh my goodness, you gave blood. And I mean, people were saying that not just because, well, they're icky of needles, but they feel like, oh, well, you went in to go get blood. Like, isn't that dangerous? Isn't that you know, like, aren't you allowed in? And the answer is yes. I was welcomed with open arms. Um, 
even with this, you know, mandate coming out and with all the places closing down, places like Life Share, um, you know, the Red Cross, all these places are are considered um, urgent, necessary facilities. Um, and if you were to go to give blood, you would be considered giving urgent medical need. So it can be a reason for you to get out of your house to go and give blood. And it's it's a very viable reason to get out of your house that people need to, to give blood. People need to give blood. Red Cross right now is looking at canceling some 30 of their blood drives um, just because they you know no one is wanting to go out and show up. And they said that's going to result in a drop of about 1,000 units of blood at least. And they said, you know, that's 1,000 people that won't get the help they need from from blood donations. Um, but those people are still need. In fact, even more with all the people getting sick, I mean, blood donations needed more than ever. Um, so I encourage you, you know, be not afraid. Go give blood. Um, if you have... If you have not been on antibiotics for at least seven days, um, if you have not taken anything with aspirin at least 48 hours, um, all of these things can make you viable to give blood. What they're looking at is taking uh, blood, or uh, red blood cells and plasma. Um, I normally give platelets, they normally love taking my platelets, but because of the need they took a unit of blood, of red blood cells and a unit of, um, of plasma. So, like I said, go get blood if you can. Um, just I highly encourage you to take that challenge and go do that. Like I said, get you out of the house um, and makes you feel productive. Like you're living that bigness of spirit that um, that we're called to. Um, you know, and also we um, we look at during these days. Um, I guess. A lot of um, a lot of those you know calls of you know the the face masks those those bacteria masks that people were running out of you know and they are they're in short supply they're they're running out um, it's a great plea for that um, I currently have a friend who is working on a project um, to make kind of artificial masks it's kind of using like plastic shield and making like a little headband which works as, as effectively. Um, and so there, it's still in the works. They're still kind of gathering information about how and what to do. But um, I will just ask if anybody has one access to a 3D printer, or two has access to a laminator. Um, if you can just like direct message me, DM me um, on either Facebook or um, Instagram. Let me know because. If, if, if kind of plans and everything get approved, um, that can be very, very helpful to making, to literally making some of these masks for, um, for these people that need um, hospitals and everything. So that's another, that's another thing. It's another little project you can work on um, with your family, with your kids. Um, but like I said, let me know um, if, if you are able to do that, if you can. Um, you know, the other thing, obviously besides some prayer, Prayer, reading scripture, those are all um, great things to do. Um, but also remember, you know, like with all these stay-at-home mandates, um, we're, we're, we're called to go outside. You know, I mean, the governors are specifically saying, you know, go outside. Um, it gets you out of the house. It, it kind of gets fresh air in you. It, um, you know, vitamin C is one of the things that they say is probably helping fight all this off. Um, so go ahead and do that. Um, they need, we need that kind of help as well. Um other thing I want to do was I wanted to offer a few little um, little science experiments that uh, maybe you can do with your family to uh, again kind of I guess break the monotony, kind of get uh, do something, you know. And, and these are going to try and be some things that you can do at your house. Um, first thing is making a homemade lava lamp. Um, all you need is a glass jar, um, water, some food coloring. Um, an oil such as either vegetable oil or olive oil and then um, an Alka-Seltzer or a couple of Alka-Seltzers and um, basically what you do is you pour the water into the jar about about a third of the way full fill it then about halfway full with the oil maybe a little bit more 
um, and then start dropping in the food coloring. When you, as you drop the food coloring in, because water is denser than oil, it will sink and it will go down to the water and it'll mix the water. And it'll make obviously the water change colors. Well, if you then take the Alka-Seltzer and you can kind of break it, break it in little pieces, and drop a few pieces in, it again will sink through the oil into the water and it will um, it will allow it to start reacting and you'll see it starts making kind of like a, a lava lamp. So it's a fun little project you can work on. Um, another thing is a, a little project I'm working on with my, with my science class right now um, to kind of be an extended project. This is something I'm working on to kind of be extended over several days that hopefully can, um, again, more people can can join in it and it can be something that can be used throughout the day, throughout several days to kind of keep us interested, keep us active. And it's called the Shadow Stick Project. So basically what it is is the ancient Greeks, um, the ancient Greeks proved that the earth was, was a circle, you know. The ancient Greeks were able to prove that before any of these, you know, flat earthers kind of started, you know, making uh, making more more noise recently. But essentially, what they did was they had these two large poles that they put um, 500 miles apart from each other in a direct north and south line. And what happened is, throughout the day, they would measure the shadows of each one and compare them, and they would find that um, one of the shadows was shorter than the other. This would only be able to happen if the Earth is curved. Because the Earth is curved, if one shadow is up, one is up here and one is down here, and the sun is down here, well, it's going to cast a shadow that's going to cause different lengths on both of them. Um, so it was one of the one of the. It's a simple way to prove that. And so again, since so many of us have access to, um, you know, online, to the internet, Facebook, and all these different things, I'm organizing a. Um, I'm organizing a group, and I, I made a page for it. So uh, like my page. I'm just gonna try and figure out a way I can sort of send that to you. But basically, um, what you need to do is get a dowel rod, get a dowel rod, or get some kind of a stick, um, a pole, a you know anything like that. But um, what you need to do is find directly south in your yard. Find where is south. That's not easy. That's not hard to do. You can get a um, you can get a a compass and just look south or you can essentially basically say okay when the sun rises it should be on my left and when it sets it should be on my right if you're doing that you're looking south okay and so um, the name of the page is just the shadow stick project so you can look that up um, basically what you then do is you need to stick the stick in the ground or the dowel rod so that um, only about that you have six feet, ex you have five feet exposed from the ground to the, to the very top. So from the ground to the top, it needs to be three feet. So obviously you can get like a tape measure, um, and just sort of like, basically what I do is I kind of measure it out about four feet. And then what I can do is just sort of bend it like that. And so then I can kind of just put it on top, put it on top of my stick, and then just kind of like, I don't know if you can see it. But so you can just kind of bend it and follow it down to the ground. And so it needs to be three feet from the ground to the top. And the more exact you can be, the better. Um, Everybody who's participating in it, make it three feet. Um, if you can't make it three feet, if like, you know, for different reasons, you're not strong enough, whatever, um, that's understandable. But for sure, mark off what is three feet from the ground up and either tie a ribbon around or something that'll be kind of like exposed outward. And then what you do is every day at, at 9 a.m., at 1 p.m., and then at 6 p.m., I want you to go out and put a little marker in the ground where the end of the shadow ends up. Um, and you'll be able to see that obviously not only does the shadow move 
but also it goes to different lengths. It grows different lengths. Um, and every day it'll be a little different. Every day it'll kind of stretch a little bit more, be a little bit shorter or whatever. Um, and that's going to that's gonna show us, obviously, the, the movement of the, of the sun and everything. And then you can even kind of like, like if you like where where the shadow is in every part, you can feel like a little, a little like straw on the ground, kind of mark those spots. You can take some string, kind of tie them together, and kind of see the movement of the sun. And every day, like I said, it's gonna be different. But this is where the fun thing is gonna become, and that's where I've kind of made the the, uh, the Facebook page. Is that again, people in different locations, it's going to be different lengths. So like at one o'clock in the afternoon, let's say here in Louisiana, the stick, because that's when it's going to be shortest, the three foot stick is maybe going to be one foot long. Okay. Well, in, you know, Minnesota, it might be, it might be three feet long. You know, it'll be interesting to see. And then from that, we can actually calculate the circumference of the earth. So I think it'd be a fun little project. Um, Anyone who needs some dowel rods that lives in Alexandria, um, I have about six of them. I'll have them outside the church, St. Francis Community Church door, the office. Um, feel free to come by and grab one. You don't have to explain. You don't have to. No one has to be here. Um, you can just come by, grab one, and and do it. But like I said, uh, look for the page. Um, I'm gonna try and maybe put a little something in the ground. Put a little. Uh, or not in the ground, put something on my Facebook, kind of a button for it. Um, but join it, like I said, especially if you can say where you live. Um, if you happen to be able to look up and find your latitude, that's even better. Um, the best is if we can find people that are in the same kind of longitude, um, but different latitudes. So like Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri, uh, Minnesota, Iowa, um, all those areas, you know, Indiana, all those are in the same, we're basically in the same time zone. And we just, like, people at different locations can do different. And even, like, people in North Louisiana will probably be different people in South Louisiana. And, it would, again, that'd be interesting to see what's the difference between someone in, like, Shreveport versus someone in Lafayette. You know, what, what difference in length it would be. So, um, that's going to that could be a fun project. And, again, you can do that with your kids. Y'all can, um... Check on it every day. You can check on it several times throughout the day. Like I said, get straws, put it in the ground to kind of keep um, keep a tab on it. You could even, like if you wanted, like put some, um, put like a sheet of kind of like construction paper or something on the ground. And as the shadow moves, you can kind of like draw and you can kind of draw the path of the sun. Um, it'll be inverted. So then when you turn it up, you'll see obviously the path of it. Um, but you know, just little little things like that you can do to kind of, um, you know, keep things keep things interested, keep them sort of, um, I guess, I guess involved, active, um, you know, doing doing stuff like that. Um, so those can be those are those are two little fun experiments um, that you can do. Like I said, just right in your house. And again, I guarantee you all have probably all of those things. Um, also, you maybe. We need to get like a little mallet or a brick or something to knock it down enough. Um, but three feet is kind of the main thing. On the page, I'll try to put more information about that. Um, but yeah, you know, so besides from reading, besides from obviously praying, which are all those important things to do, um, I'm trying to find just some good things we can all do to, to stay active and stay involved with each other's lives. I think by doing this, we'll have kind of a Facebook page that people can join in and kind of... Um, be you know just just be active and kind of in communication that kind of takes our mind off of um some of these things that are going on um so those are a few little fun projects um that you can do um trying to think if there's anything else that if anybody, uh, you know if anyone also you know keep in mind like we as priests like you know we're not we're not, we're not dead you know so um yesterday i had like Probably eight people asked me for drive th drive through confession. Um, it sounds silly, but um, if y'all are out in the town, if y'all are driving around, you know, don't be afraid to to message me. Message me on Facebook. Message me on Instagram. 
um, if you ha you know if you have your cell phone or something, just um, let us know and say like I need confession, I like confession. You know we don't know what's going on with all this. Um, I'm happy to just walk outside to the curb, you know, at the church, and y'all can just drive through, pull around, roll on your window. I mean, you can keep a good distance away from me and go to confession, and then move on. You know, I mean, don't be afraid to ask, um, ask for those things. Um, you know that we're we're still here. We're still praying for all of y'all, offering mass and everything. Um, like I said, you know, go get blood, please. They need it. Um, and you would you would have a verifiable reason if you were out, you know, because this is an essential service that's that you are helping to offer to other people. Um, so just continue to you know stay active in those those types of things. Um, like I said, if you have a three D printer, please let me know or something like that. That way we can we can really just um, hopefully help out these people. Um, and like I said, you know, if you get a chance, um, I don't know if you can, but look up and pick up this book, The Noontime Demon. It is very, very good. Um, I think it's good for us today in these times. Um, also, just kind of a reminder that the Apostolic Penitentiary has put out a, um, a plenary indulgence, first of all, for those who, um, those who are directly affected by the, um, by the, the, um, what's it called? by the coronavirus. Um, so there's a there's a plenary indulgence granted for those who are willing to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Um, this is, so here's kind of some of the, uh, the specifics. Um, here it is. So because of the pandemic, anyone who with the will to fulfill the usual conditions, which is confession, Eucharistic communion, and prayer accord in the and prayer for the Pope's intentions as soon as possible, recite the Divine Mercy Chaplet with the intention to implore from Almighty God an, the end to the, the epidemic, relief for those who are afflicted, and eternal salvation for those whom the Lord has called Himself, can receive a plenary indulgence each day. So every day you can get a plenary indulgence. Um, you also can get a, for those who are suffering from the coronavirus and are, are in any kind of quarantine, um, whether it's in hospitals or in their own homes, um, they can get a plenary indulgence if you simply unite spiritually through the media of the celebration of the Mass, the recitation of the Holy Communion, or, or pray the way of the cross, or any form of devotion, or at least if you can recite the Creed and the Lord's Prayer um, the, in offering your trials up to the Lord, then you will get a plenary indulgence. Healthcare workers, family members of those who... Following the example of the Good Samaritan, expose themselves to the risk of, of being contagious and care for the sick of a corona according to the words of the Divine Redeemer will obtain the same gift of the plenary indulgence under the same conditions. The, plenary, the penitentiary also grants a plenary indulgence under the same condition on the occasion of the current world epidemic. Also, also the faithful who offer a visit to the Blessed Sacrament or Eucharistic Adoration or reading the Holy Scriptures for at least half an hour, or the recitation of the Holy Erosion, or the pious exercise of the Way of the Cross, for the re for, or the recitation of the Divine Mercy Chaplet again. Um, so these are, again, all different things. And you can, again, churches are open. You know, keep in mind the churches are staying open. You know, y'all can come in and visit. Y'all can pray. Um, those are all little things we can do during these days. So... Just encourage y'all um, during these days to stay strong, um, keep yourself active, you know, check up on people, go outside, do some of these science experiments. So um, I'll just give you all a blessing again, and Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you for each and every one of us here that is trying to stay active and faithful during these hard times. Give us faith, perseverance, and peace in our hearts. We ask, Lord, for you to continue to uphold us and to show us your will during these times. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. God bless y'all.